Okay, um, here we are for our um, online lesson from Fiverr. Um, just wanted to let you know that um, generally these, these first lessons, they're kind of just a uh, brush up on um, fundamentals, and then we kind of look into more, a little bit more advanced things after we make sure the fundamentals are, are sound. All right, so uh, first of all, thanks for your order, and um, I was taking a look at your swing course before I hit record, and you know, there's there's a lot of good things going on, um, and there's some things that uh, that we can really tidy up, and you're going to see immediate results uh, from in your from like just fixing, you know, in the in this first lesson here, you're going to see some things that. Um, or you're going to do some things that you're going to say, wow, I'm going to hit the ball a little bit further and you're going to see your iron play go a little bit further. Um, and your probably your contact is going to be a little bit more consistent. So, I mean, that's why, that's why we're here. That's why we do golf, golf lessons here. So, um, let me turn the volume down on that one. Um, so of course I got Tiger over here on the right. Um, I try to use him, uh, as a model for most people. Um, unless, uh, unless we really, um, uh, see something that we like uh, in someone else, or you prefer to work with work uh, around someone else. But again, um, here's Tiger. Here he's. Uh, this is just a, looks like a pretty stock iron shot. He maybe trying to knock it down a little bit. But anyway, it's a great uh, it's a great golf lesson um, model to use. So, without further ado, let's dive in here. So first of all, before we do anything, I look at setup. What can we change in setup? to model this guy, all right? So first thing I want you to see is look at this foot here. You're standing pretty square to the ball, which you probably haven't even heard of this before, but I like this left foot out flared just a little bit. And you can see Tiger has added that in his repertoire. Putting that left foot flared, Google it, Ben Hogan, was the one who started this. And you see a lot of guys on tour to do this as well. Just flare it just a little bit. Open it up just a little bit. Like I said, you can kind of see Tiger's foot here. Open just a hair compared to this one. All right, uh, pretty minor, but um, this one I want I want to touch base on for sure, and I want you to implement no matter what. Check out his shaft angle here. See how his hands specifically are ahead of the ball compared to where the ball is. Sorry, I keep changing colors here. But if I was to draw a 90 degree line, you can see his hands are directly in, ahead, where yours are actually behind. What this leads to is scooped shots where your hands are scooping that ball up in the air with your hands lagging and the club face going up at impact, whereas you'll see Tiger, his hands are leading and the shaft is going down at impact. Uh, actually de-lofting the club, which he's getting more out of it, um, getting more distance out of the club by doing that. So again, hands ahead at impact, shaft hitting into the ground, um, club hitting into the ground with his hands ahead of it, putting negative loft on the face, which in creates a better ball flight and more distance. Now we go to what we're doing currently. Our hands are straight in line at impact here. And you'll see next, let me clear these lines again. This club will go up, wrists will bend back. Let's see if I can do it, there we go. Wrist bending back, adding loft to the club. Again, that's a little bit technical, but strictly set up, I want your hands ahead of the ball. And if you have to move the ball back just a little bit, let's go back to Tiger's setup here. See where his ball is, oops, wrong way on the arrow. See where his ball is compared to his feet. He's back in his stance just a little bit. So, sorry, I like to draw a little bit, but we're going to move this ball back, and our hands are going to bump forward. All right, so write these down. 
as we go, because you'll, you'll want to take this to the range. Um, you may even want to watch this video out at the range. Um, after we flare our foot, we bump our hands ahead, our setup is totally changed. We went from trying to scoop a ball to now hitting down and trying to compress into the ball. All right. Um, our feet, they're pr a pretty good distance apart. I like that. I generally like um, kind of inside the shoulders. So that's okay. But one thing other that I do notice immediately at our setup is I want you to add what is called a little bit of spine tilt behind the ball. Right now, your spine is straight up and down. All right, I want you to get behind the ball a little bit. It's going to feel like your left ear is behind the ball. You're going to fall back on it a little bit. Why this is? Because at impact, this is where you want to be. You want your body to be behind the ball. Your, your upper body, your hips are firing and your upper body stays back. That's where maximum power goes to the ball. Um, as that is just the biggest point of inertia hitting the ball. Right now, we'll swing here. You do do it um, a hair, naturally. Your, your head it falls back. We just get a little tight here with our hands and arms, which, like I said, we will fix that on a later date. But your natural tendency is to fall back. You're doing fine. I want to add it into our setup. Why do we have to, why should we, in the middle of our swing, have to get to this position at impact when we can just start at our setup? I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm picking on you. I'm, I'm more just making rational thoughts out loud and trying to help you understand why, why I want this. I, I, when I was playing and, and getting coached, I wanted to know why I was doing these things, why I was being coached. So again, that's kind of why I'm saying this. Why do we want to get to the yellow line? Or, or Let me back up. Why should we not set up just like we are at the yellow line at impact? Again, I'm going to draw a green line for where we're at the beginning. And the yellow line is where Tiger's at at impact. All right. We're setting ourselves up for a better chance of getting to that position. So again, we have so far, our, we're going to flare our foot a little bit. Our hands are going to bump ahead. Our ball is going to go back. And then we're adding a little bit of spine tilt to your off swing. One final thing I want to leave you with. Um, and again, these things sound pretty minor, but this is what every single first lesson is going to be. It's not going to be the most fun thing ever, but I promise if you write these down and you do them one at a time on the range, you're going to see a result and you're going to say, wow, you know, my ball flight is changing for the better. Um, so one final thing before I go and just a little bonus tip is I want you to watch your head. So after you move your spine back a little bit, your head's gonna be in this general area. I want you to focus on keeping your left ear behind the ball throughout the entire golf swing whenever you're practicing these shots. And I'm gonna put an arrow toward um, Tiger's ear here just to show you what I'm meaning. See how much deeper his head just got and behind the ball he just got? as he loads into it, his left ear never went in front of the ball. Now, obviously we're starting in front of it alert right now, but we're, we're gonna change that. See how our move right now. You're doing this in a way, but we just gotta do it with the setup. All right, we just gotta fix the setup. 